Hi, welcome to our Beyond the Bell open house. Um, people are joining us right now, so we're just going to wait just a, a minute or two here and let everyone get on. Just squeaking. Margaret, it looks, I think we can go ahead and get started, don't you? Sure. Um, I'm just going to go over some housekeeping items before we start our presentation. So thank you for joining us tonight for the Beyond the Bell open house. Um, we will have time for questions. We're asking you to use the question module in the app. There's, it's indicated by a little question mark, so you could just pull that up and type in your question. If you're on a phone or tablet, there is a presentation tonight, and you might need to swipe your screen to see that presentation. Otherwise, you just see who's talking, I believe. So you might just wanted to make you aware of that. And um, I will turn things, oh, and you also are muted. So please type those questions and I'm going to turn things over to Amy Kopecki to get us started. Thank you, Margaret. Um, so welcome to our Beyond the Bell um, webinar. I'm going to introduce, uh, like Margaret said, I'm Amy Kopecki. I am the Youth and Special Event um, Supervisor. We also have on the call Julie Grieve, who is our Recreation Program Manager, Robin Bataglia, who is our Youth uh, Coordinator, and Debbie Majek, who is our Customer Service Manager. Um, for this webinar, we're going to be giving you um, a brief overview of the program. We're going to talk a little bit about the history, um, ATP information, including typical day or academy classes, who our staff are, communication, um, some emergency procedures, how to prepare for BTB, how to register for BTB. Um, so we're just going to dive right in. Um, again, as Margaret said, you know we are using the questions. Um, please put your questions in the chat. So, um, so we are a park district program that works very closely with District 64 to provide a safe and fun before and after school care program. We started the program back in 2013 at Roosevelt Elementary School, and then in 2014, it was launched at all five elementary schools. Um, throughout the program, you might hear us say BTB, Beyond the Bell is commonly referred to as BTB. Um, you know, we've had the program now in existence for about 10 years, and it's just ever growing in popularity. And we're very happy to bring this recreation program to the schools um, for the before or after their day. Um, some of the things we'll talk about later, but you know, we provide a wide range of activities, including indoor and outdoor play, homework, arts and crafts, um, and organized games. And at the school, each school is a little bit different, but we usually utilize in the schools. Um, their gym space, sometimes their multi-purpose room, sometimes the LRC and classroom as needed. Um, every school has a little bit different uh, space that we use, but that's typically uh, where we are at in the building. And I'm gonna next turn it over to Robin Bataglia, who is gonna talk to you a little bit about um, some daily BTB information. Thanks so much, Amy. So the day-to-day -day, um, beyond the bell, you can drop a Every, every school has a uh, designated spot for a drop off. There will be a park district staff to greet your child in the morning and check them in. Staff are identifiable with their blue Beyond the Bell shirts. Uh, afternoon, at pickup time, we ask to see your IDs until we recognize a person who's listed on the EPAC form. Um, we will talk about EPAC a little bit later. Um, any kind of allergies or medicine, any particular information is another thing that you would update on the EPAC information, which is the online medical emergency contact information. And um, discipline policies and procedures. BTB is supposed to be a fun place, and we don't want to think about discipline, but if situations should arise, we will contact you and work through the best solution for your child other children and staff. 
And next slide, please. Yeah, who are our staff? So each school has a site court is supervised by um, a site coordinator who's qualified experience to oversee the day-to-day -day operations of BTB and the counselors. Our counselors are a mix of our mature, enthusiastic adults, college age, high school kids. Um, all staff members have complete training program that covers supervision, daily operations, safety techniques, curriculum development, and emergency procedures. We tend to follow the same emergency protocols that D64 does for different uh, drills and stuff like that. Uh, we have a 10 to 1 ratio of kids to staff. And a typical beyond the bell day. So in the morning, we're available for drop off after 7 a.m. Kids will engage in quiet games, Legos, coloring sheets, finish up some homework. The gym will open up around 7.50 for open, open gym time and games. Um, by 8.40, they line up in grade lines and are escorted to classrooms. The afternoon schedule, kids come down, they're checked in, they eat their snack from home, and after that, they have a choice of working at the homework table, creative corner, which is really games, Legos and crafts, or going outside um, for playground time or structured gym time. We supervise homework, but we're not tutors. Um, we are also a recreational program, so we try to get the kids outside, weather permitting. You know, they need to run off some of their steam from the day. And how to prepare for BTB, which is the next slide. So when you, after you register for Beyond the Bell, you're sent a link for EPACT, which is our online emergency information used by all of our park district programs. Um, it covers authorized pickup individuals, any kind of medical concerns, anything that is necessary for us to know about your child. Uh, snacks, we ask you to pack a nut-free snack for them to bring for the afternoon for them to have during snack time. And just like school, label everything. Um, if there's a label on the backpacks and the coats and the boots and all the miscellaneous things kids bring with them and they are left behind, they can certainly be returned. Um, if they are not labeled, they probably will end up in the school lost and found. And communication. So before school starts, talk with your child about the program. Let them know what to expect. Also, all Beyond the Bell sites can be contacted directly uh, with their designated phone or email um, for any particular questions or concerns. Certainly, you can always call myself or Amy with any other concerns that aren't covered here. And now I'm going to turn it over to Amy Kopecki. Hey, Robin. Um, okay, so moving on. We are going to talk uh, about our academy classes. Um, they're currently on hold, but we're really excited and we hope that we're going to bring these back for the 23-24 school year. Um, our academy classes are an additional fee, and what's really great is we bring them to your uh, to your school site. We do offer them only in the afternoon, though, but it's basically we're bringing a purchaser program um, to BTB, and we've done in the past, we've done art, we've done nature science, we've done cooking, technology, magic workshops, um, so it's just a new, unique uh, way to bring the program to your child while they're at Beyond the Bell. Communication. So as Robin said, you know, parents are able to communicate with their, uh, directly with their site coordinator via the site phone or the, the site email. You can also um, text is another easy way to get in contact with our site coordinators. As Robin said, in addition, you can always contact her or myself. Um, the Park District has a working Google Doc with every school, so every classroom teacher has access to this. And this document is updated in real time. So when we make it on our end of a child has switched a day or they've dropped a day or 
Um, I said that it's automatically updated and the teacher can see that. And then another thing we do throughout the year is we have our electronic newsletters. Um, we update what we've been, we update you on what we've been doing in the program. We share pictures from the program. We'll tell you about upcoming um, academy information. Um, and then we usually do a staff highlight because we think it's important that you know a little bit about the staff that are with your children every day. Um, illness plans. We please do not send your child to BTB if they're showing um, any illness uh, symptoms such as um, pink eye or lice or you know any any signs of illness. Um, if we are in program and they start to um, exhibit signs of symptoms or illness, we will immediately remove the child um, and we'll move them to an area kind of away from the program um, and we're going to contact you uh, to come come pick up your kiddo and then, Sometimes families are required to provide uh, written documentation from a physician before a child can return to the program. And this is typically if um, they've broken an arm or they've broken a leg outside of the program. We just need to know um, what they can and are not able to do. Amy, can I ask um, you and Robin a question that we got in the, the questions? Absolutely. Okay, so the question is, can the kids bring a snack in the morning? We mentioned bringing a snack in the afternoon. Are they allowed to have a snack in the morning? Yes, we have, not that many, but some do. But of course, they can definitely bring a snack in the morning. Yeah. Great, thank you. You're welcome. All right, moving on to emergency procedures. Um, our staff are trained um, in emergency procedures, including lost child, tornado, fire, lockdown, and suspicious person, um, such as if there's somebody on the playground that just we're not getting a good vibe from, we will bring the children inside and keep them inside. We also do not let anybody into the building during program. So, um, you know, like Robin explained, the pick up and drop off, you know, we don't let someone knocking on the door of, oh, what, my kiddo left there. Chromebook in their locker. Sorry, we're not going to let you in the building. We don't, we don't know that. Um, also, as many of you know, we have the Thorgard system. Our counselors are all aware of how this works. It is, um, they know one long blast, seat cover fast, three short sounds, safe to be around. If Thorgard does go off, they will um, go inside. But also, we do tell our staff to um, use their best judgment. And even if Thorgard's not going off and everything looks a little questionable outside, get inside. And then um, lastly, this is a very rare thing, but it has happened. Um, if for some unexpected reason that we have to leave the school because of loss of electricity, flooding, unsafe conditions, um, during program hours, we work very closely with the school district to find alternative locations. Um, if this does happen, we will send you an email, we'll update the information on our website, we'll update the information on the cell phone. Um, You'll probably get an email from um, Robin, myself, and maybe the site. Um, again, this is just an emergency procedure, but we want to make sure that you're aware that um, it could be a possibility that sometimes this could happen. Um, next, I'm going to turn it over to Debbie Mychuk, who is going to go over some registration information for Beyond the Bell. Debbie, you're still muted. Well, wait, Debbie, I'm going to answer this. We're going to answer this question quickly before you start. Um, all right, Amy, Amy and Robin. OK, can you clarify? You said that people aren't allowed into the building if not part of B2B program. Um, but doesn't the school have people coming and going for sports events? Um, we're usually in the gyms, so um, our area of B2B is just that for BTV. Um, there could be other things going on in the schools, but it's not in the area that BTV is in. Um, the sports events like basketball, that would um, start after our program is over. Um, Rob, is there anything else to elaborate on that? No, just the fact that our area tends to be a little bubble. Um, so there are, will be double doors between the gym area and the rest of the school because obviously we don't want to be an access point for anyone else. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. 
No, I still can't hear her. We unmuted. You were working earlier. Mm -mm. Take your headphones out and put them back in. You already did that. Hello. Well, up. Oh, I think I heard can you. Hear can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. You're good. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <Technical> difficulties. <laughs> okay. So beyond the ball registration is coming up in just a few short, a few short weeks. Um, so starting April 3rd at 9 a.m. is when our current school year families can start enrolling for next school year. Um, open enrollment for any new families will start on April 10th, starting at 9 a.m. Either online or in person for either one of these options. We do suggest online registration. Uh, it will be a little bit faster. Um, registration will remain open until August 1st at noon or until um, a site reaches their maximum uh, before August 1st, then that obviously will be shut down before then, and then wait lists will be started. Um, anything after noon on August 1st will automatically be added to a wait list, and then they will, depending upon availability at sc the schools, then we'll start looking at those wait lists and seeing if we're able to offer any additional spaces. Um, I just want to touch base about the wait list that if the selection, the options that you need are full, please add your children or child to the, any wait list and any option that you need for Beyond the Bell for next school year. Um, just that we, you know, we continually work through process through the wait lists um, continually through. Um, you know, as, as the time goes on. Okay, next slide. So we'd like to keep this program as affordable as possible for our families but while still offering a quality and enriching program. So average cost, average cost per day um, before care for five each day of the week is $7.46 a day. Aftercare Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday is $10.65 a day. And our Wednesday aftercare fee is $13.83 a day. Um, the reason for the Wednesday is that the kids get out a little bit earlier, so our day is a little bit longer with Beyond the Bell. Um, we have two payment options, so a pay in full option, or you can choose a monthly payment plan. Um, the monthly payment plan is just taking that full fee option and dividing it up over 10 payments. And our 10 payments start August 15th through May 15th. Um, so that will be, and that will go automatically drafted to the credit card you choose at the time of registration. Um, obviously, if you pay in full, there'll be no further payments required. Um, if you do need schedule changes to your schedule anytime during the school year, we ask that you please email Robin or you can myself, either one, um, to request those changes via email. Um, there is a $5 administration change per change request uh, per child. Um, and then we also do ask for five business days to get that request completed and communicated to all parties uh, involved. So it's the school, teachers, the site, um, you know, so just make sure everyone has the correct communication going into any change for the following week. Okay. Excellent. I think, Debbie, are you doing registration next? Yes, we can go through a live demonstration as well, which we can, can do. Um, I was going to pause you while you, because are you going to pull up your rec track? I thought maybe we would go through a couple of questions while you yes, pull it up. Yes, I just have to remember how to be changed to presenter and share screen. Debbie, I'm going to change you to presenter. Thank you. Okay, so... The questions that we were kind of anticipating that we don't have 100% great answers for, but we'll do our best. Um, so Robin and Amy, uh, feel free to jump in. So um, the questions are regarding to um, how quickly um, the spots fill up, 
Is it possible that all the spots are taken before April 10th? Um, I guess we can say anything is possible. Um, you know, last year was a lot more challenging because we had no returning staff after being out for a couple of years. Um, this year, we're hoping to have returning staff. Um, you know, our camp numbers, we saw a huge increase in enrollment. Um, so we usually, and you know, pre-COVID, we were able to accommodate everyone who was um, priority re-registering. And then there were some spots uh, and the spots open up as we get staff. Um, so that's why I think Debbie was talking about the wait list is if we can accommodate in the spaces that we're given in the school district, then, um, you know, Robin does her magic and hires a staff member. And then, you know, but, you know we have to onboard that staff member, train that staff member, and then that would allow um, 10 more children into the program. Um, so, you know, the program does um, fill up quickly. Um, I can't, I, I don't know if anyone can give a definite of when it will fill up, um, but um, we do, you know, Robin and Amy work tired, tired, tirelessly on trying to get staff. We work with the school district to try to get more space in the school if they can. Um, but that's, you know, Robin, I don't know if you want to elaborate any more. You know, I think you covered it really well. I mean, naturally, our bigger schools tend to have a bigger enrollment. The smaller schools, you know, tend to sort of uh, cap out at a smaller number. Some, some particular days will never have a wait list, you know, certain time slots. So unfortunately, the past couple of years have you know, given us new, um, you know, has kind of broken the the standards that we used to expect. Um, so every day, every year is a little bit different. Um, but yeah, we try our best to accommodate. And sometimes yeah. there's trends that um, we don't expect. Like we would think one school is gonna fill up really quickly and they were really slow to fill up that year. Um, so it's just, yeah. and then one of our schools that used to have lower enrollment, I think was up like a hundred kids. So, I mean, it is really hard for us to predict. Um, and that's why, you know, we try our best to get as many people in as quickly as we can. Um, please know that we try, please know that we work really hard and, and try to accommodate as many kids as we want, as we can, because we would take them all if we could. Uh, that's what we yeah. wanted, that's, that's our wheelhouse. Um, someone did ask um, what time it goes till in the afternoon. Um, so BTB ends at 6 p.m. You don't have to wait till 6 p.m. to pick up. You can pick up any time between the end of the school day and 6 p.m. 6 p.m. And um, yes, BTB is available to kindergartners. Um, now with um, full day kindergarten, there isn't the transportation to and from Jefferson like there had been in previous years, but we have always had kindergartners in our program. All right, and Debbie, our schools I think are very heavy, heavily kindergartens. You know, we have a lot of kindergartners, so our programs tend to skew towards the younger grades. Um, so yeah. We, we do have a lot more younger kids than the fourth, fifth graders, don't we? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. All right. I think we're kind of mm -hmm. caught up on questions here. Debbie, are you ready? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can, that's okay. Can you see my screen? Or what's what's on the screen? The, yep. the website? Yep, you're good. Perfect. Okay. All right. So first thing everyone's going to do is get to our website at uh, prparks.org. So once you get to our website, in the upper right hand corner, you're going to click the register button that will redirect you to the online page. So once you're here under the search drop down, it's simply by clicking 2023 24 beyond the bell option, you'll take you directly to all the options that we have for next year's beyond the bell. So these are in alphabetical order carpenter field page two. We'll have Franklin, Roosevelt, page three, we'll have um, Washington, 
and before care and after care are two separate enrollments by day. So for demonstration, I'm gonna go back to Carpenter and I'm gonna use Carpenter School. So I'm gonna to go to um, Carpenter before care I'm, and just, I'm gonna select. I'm gonna need Monday before care, Wednesday before care, Friday before care, and then I'm gonna go down to under aftercare. Again, you see my little um, list building down here on the bottom of the screen. Aftercare, I'm gonna want Wednesday aftercare. Okay, so that's where we're gonna go. Once you have your four items or as many items as you need selected, you click add to cart. I do need to log in, so I'm gonna take care of that now. And you can log in prior to starting or obviously after you started your selection. So now I have two family members in my household that are eligible for Beyond the Belt program. Steven, who was already enrolled, obviously he can get priority. And Bob here, he's gonna be a new kindergartner, so he can also be enrolled. And I'm gonna continue. So, so Debbie, so um, what you had just said, so if they have a family who's already been in the program and they have a new kindergartner, they can register the new kindergartner with the rest of the family, correct? Yes, that's correct. Right. Okay. Perfect example. That was right with the yep. question. There you go. So for <laughs> Bob here, um, he's going to be entering kindergarten. So I'm going to choose K for all of his grades. I'm going to choose a monthly payment plan. So in the next here is this billing option. So pay attention. This is where you're going to have to choose either a payment in full or a payment plan option. So for payment plan options, if you have an existing credit card here attached, I have two, please make sure you choose the right one. Um, or if you wanted to add a checking or savings account, which is an ACH withdrawal, or you can add a new credit card uh, to this option as well. So I'm just gonna choose the my credit card ending here in 4066. I'm gonna scroll down. I have a waiver. I'm going to select as participant. I'm just gonna simplify this and I'm going to continue. So now for Bob, I had the waiver one time. I have to answer the same questions though. Kindergarten, credit cards already pre-selected here, 4066, I'm gonna continue. Bob again, we should be on Friday before care of kindergarten, billing option, payment plan, continue. That's three options, I have one more for Bob for aftercare, for Wednesday aftercare, kindergarten, payment plan, same credit card, continue. So now it's gonna ask me for Steven. So Steven's gonna go into second grade. I'm choosing the payment plan under the billing option again for the credit card ending in 4066. I have a waiver for Steven, it's a new participant. I'm gonna sign as parent or guardian Type in your full name, please. I'm just shortcutting here a little bit. Do a little signature there and then continue. Same grade for Steven. I think I chose second grade. Oh, sorry, I don't remember. Um, payment plan, check your billing options. Payment plan, continue. And then second grade, check your billing option, continue. And then I have the Wednesday aftercare, last one for Steven, second grade, billing option, the payment plan, continue. So now all of this stuff is gonna get put into my cart. Here's my shopping cart. I have one, two, three, four items for Bob, and I have one, two, three, four items for Steven. You will not be paying any deposits this year for Beyond the Bell, so you'll have zero payments to make um, today or on the day you register. So with that, I'm gonna proceed, proceed to checkout. It's asking me for zero, which is correct. Zero paid today, my name, phone number, email, and then continue. And then I have a receipt number, and then that will get emailed directly to the email address on your account. Once you get that, so then you're registered. Um, continue shopping or log out, whatever you need to do at this point. Um, just a couple little helpful things. If you wanted to take a look at maybe your installment billing that you have coming up under my under the My Account dropdown, go to the installment billing under Updates, and then it'll tell you what the upcoming 
bill is the next bill date and it'll tell you exactly what the item is, how much each bill is, and then what credit card or how the payment is linked. If this needs to be changed, you can update it here, but we prefer you to call us. I'm not quite sure that we get that information um, correctly in the system. So if you do have to update a credit card for a payment plan, give us a call here at the office at Main Park and we will go ahead and take that information from you over the phone. And then after the August 15th, if you go back in and look at this again, it'll say September 15th. You can even do it now, just FYI, if you have any campaign that's coming up. So um, any questions on registration? Debbie, can you show them um, how to find their child care tax receipt? I can do that. I don't know if mine might be blank, but yes. Oh, so again, sorry. Under the my, it's okay. Under it's my account drop down. That's okay. Under my account drop down again, under the reports heading, the report heading, you're going to choose child care statements. Here, you put in for the tax year if you want for 2022. Uh, you don't, if you wanted to subtotal each month, just go through the questions here um, and you can print totals by family member and then hit submit. And then you'll get that PDF receipt uh, report directly to your email. Um, so that's one, one way to, to do that. Um, easy way to do it anytime you need it during the year. Um, and just a couple other questions, Debbie. Um, are there any fees with using a credit card or an ACH? No, no fees. Mm -mm. And then um, I wish Advantage paid this. Can you show us how to use the wish list? I can. So I'm going to go back to the Thank home you. list. Sure. Um, I'm going to go back to my search. I'm going to do the Beyond the Bell again. Um, Carpenter School, since I, I did, I'm gonna, instead of clicking this box on the left side of the row, go all the way to the right side and you're gonna click the three little dots here and you have a drop down. it says add to wish list. Okay, so that's done. I'm gonna do the Tuesday add to wish list. I'm gonna do the, I already did Wednesday, so I can't do that again. Thursday add to wish list and then Friday add to wish list. So now to view your wish list, go back up to your drop down under my account, go to your wish list. If you have items in your wish list, you'll have to add these items to your cart one by one. Doing that, you'll have to do the waiver one by one, as opposed to that list that we did at the beginning of the demonstration. So if I add to cart, I'm just gonna choose Steven this time and continue. I have to do each one individually. I'm gonna do this one as a pay in full option. Here's a waiver, sign parent or guardian. And continue. Go back up there to your wish list, my account wish list. I'm gonna to add to cart for Monday aftercare. Oh, this might give me a duplicate enrollment because I've already did Monday, duplicate enrollment. I'm going to go back and choose Tuesday up to my accounts wish list. Tuesday. I don't know why it doesn't remove from your wish list. I would think it should. I'm going to choose Steven. Continue. Again, you're going to set the grade. Oh, it didn't ask me for a waiver because it's the same the same participant. I'm going to choose Bob next time. So up accounts wish list. Wednesday or Thursday, I'm going to go to Bob. It's going to ask you for the for the waiver on this one because it's a new participant. And I chose the payment plan on this one, so it's not going to ask me for any money for these two. So the wish list is something you can do prior to registration. You can. So you can prepare for the day, but you still have to add them to your cart individually. One by one, as opposed to that, that list I made at the beginning of the demonstration. So I can go back to my wish list, then I'm going to clear the wish list, and then you're zero. The clearing it is after you've already registered everything. Yeah, I I just don't know why it doesn't clear once you add to your cart. That that part doesn't make sense to me. I would think it would clear the wish list if you add it to your cart. That would be a 
uh, software question. So the next question in is if adding two wish lists, can you select both children if you need same days? Yes, I had, that's yes. why I had the Bob and Stephen both listed there. I just chose to choose one of the two, but you can choose both. Because every, el every eligible right. family member will populate um, after you choose add to cart. And that's where you choose your participant that you want, whether it's one, both, all, or none. But we would have to, so the wish list, you can list every child, every option. But well, the you, wish list doesn't, you don't ch choose the family member on the wish list. It's where you take the wish list and add to cart is where you choose your family member. So would they have to add? Let me go back. So it doesn't delete from the wish list. So they would go back to the wish list, use that same selection and choose a different um, child. Yeah, let me, let me, let me try a different sample here. So I'm going to add just a Monday to the wish list. I'm going to go back up to my account to wish list. I wonder if I choose both participants, if it will clear the wish list, because let me try that. Oh, okay. So let me try that. See, we're going to experiment. So I'm going to add to cards. <laughs> Good question. Good question. I'm going to choose both. Continue. Well, I asked for one grade though. Oh, shoot, because I have it in my cart possibly. I have things in my cart, that's why. Let me let me empty my cart. <laughs> that's why it's not letting me do it. It's a wish list. Okay, add to cart. Bob, Steven, continue. This is for Bob, so grade K, payment plan, waiver. Continue. Now it should ask me for Steven. Second payment plan. And waiver. Now both of those items should be in my shopping cart. So now let's go back up to my account and wish list. It's still there. So it will stay in your <laughs> wish list until you physically remove it as of, at this time. <laughs> But that's a good question. I didn't even think about it. Like selecting both would remove it, but it doesn't. Um, and then this is uh, a question about the change process. Okay. So um, if you are going on vacation or taking a long weekend, something like that, that's not a change. That's you um, just letting your site coordinator know that you will not be at the program because otherwise, um, we start contacting the school, calling you, sending us out, calling the police, trying to find yeah. a lost child. So please remember to let us know if you're not going to be there. <laughs> especially uh, the aftercare. Especially for aftercare. <laughs> yes. um, so that any of those instances that Julie just mentioned do not qualify as a change. Um, if you're registered in one day, in five days, and you need to change that down to three days, the remainder of the school year, that's a change. So we're keeping them in three days, we're moving two days for the rest of the school year, that's a change. So if you're gonna miss a day of aftercare because you're going on vacation, we don't prorate for those misses. Um, but we do ask you to please contact your site to let them know if the kids will not be in any day of aftercare. Otherwise, like Julie said, we will start the search process if we don't have your child to check in. I'll go into panic mode. Um, yes. So a change would be a permanent change to your schedule. Right. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. I think our emails are um, on the last slide. If we want to pop it back I'm gonna, on, I'm going to change okay. presenters and you pop can... that one on. Oh, okay. wait, I think we, we just got one more question. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so the, sorry, I had to read first. <laughs> if you are on the wait list for multiple days, for example, Monday through Thursday, and a spot is available on a Tuesday, is that spot made available or only when all the days are open? So it is by day. As things so, become available, we do communicate that. Um, and uh, this year we did majority of our communication via email, um, whether it's from my email here at prparks.org 
or we have a wait list at prparks.org email that we use as well. Um, so those are the probably the two ways we would communicate a wait list opportunity uh, for you know any any wait list that you're on, especially if it's a, a high demand program, we will do it out by email first. And we will email and we usually give a time frame of when time to return. Depends, yeah, if we usually try to give two to three days um, for a return and, not, and then to redo that wait list depends upon how quickly we get those replies in, but there will be a deadline included in that email. Because we don't want to just sit and hold spots um, waiting. Um, okay, another waitlist question. Oh, I just lost my question. We're no longer on my screen, is that correct? Correct. Thank you. Um, sorry, I just have to pop out the question. Um, if you need all five days with only two are open, should I sign up for what is available? Yes, I would. Yeah. Yes. Um, how would you know I need the other three days? So go on the wait list for the other three days. So Correct. sign up, you know, if you need all five days, sign up for what's available, go on the wait list for the others. That's how we will know um, what you want. And then in the past, which schools tend to fill up the fastest? Oh, that's um, a good question. That's a great question. A question. Wasn't it different last year than normal? I think we were surprised at how quickly one of the schools filled up last year compared to something we thought would have filled up immediately. I mean, I guess historically Roosevelt usually has um, the, the the longest wait list. Mm -hmm. They're the hardest to um, the aftercare. Um, Robin, you popping on, you probably know better. Well, from my recollection, I think Washington filled up the quickest this year. That's I think what that I remember too. Kind of like our, our surprise. Um, it's, norm it's normally Roosevelt and then Washington came from behind this year? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But um, aftercare seems to fill up faster than before care. Correct. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Oh, okay. Got a couple more questions. Um, do we anticipate having more kids in the program full day kindergarten because of full day kindergarten? Um, I believe full day kindergarten started this year, so I think that might be some of the reason we saw the full the increase this year. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're thinking we'll have similar numbers this year um, and next year. Um, with the full day kindergarten starting last year. So, um, you know, that's our best guess. I'd agree with that. You guys have asked some great questions today. Thank you so much. Okay, oh. okay a couple more. All right, Robin and Amy, okay. Um, do we current, uh, I, yeah, do we currently, Robin, this is going to be for you. Do you currently have enough staff to accommodate at least all of the people from last year? Um, I would say we don't know that yet because um, we don't know if all of them are returning next year. Um, so we have all the staff now that you know, that we need for now, but we don't know for next year because we're not sure who are, is coming back. I can tell you that Robin is busy this week going to job fairs. So um, we're, you know, it's a constant hire for this position. I think you're um, muted. We do try to, you know, cover the the certain amount of staff that we leave that will head off to college by, you know, bringing in someone to fill their ranks. But, you know, it's something, it's an ongoing process, like Julie said. And then a question about, another question about full day kindergarten. Um, can we clear, clarify what full day kindergarten is, the hours? I believe they have the same hours as first through uh, fifth grade. Right. They so start, I think 
the first bell rings at 8.40, and then they have like the, the lineup check-in bell at 8.50. Seems like there's a series of bells all the time, but um, yeah, it's the and, same thing. And then they end the day at, is it three? 3.30. 3 Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, except for Wednesday, which is 2.40. Um, do you have recommendations for families who do not get off the wait list before the school year begins? Um, yeah, so I think um, we there was another, I'm sorry, I'm trying to think in the back of my head. We had heard that there was someone else who was doing an aftercare program that we hadn't heard about um, over by Roosevelt. They were picking kids up. Um, but you know what we normally tell people is to you know work with neighbors, work with other families, um, you know maybe an outside babysitter. Um, oh, thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> a STEM club is what it was. Yeah, we hadn't heard about it. the school hadn't heard about it, but they were picking kids up from Roosevelt. So there are a few other options over there. Um, there was one the new um, child care facility over by Jewel on Greenwood. They were going to bus people, um, but I think that fell through um, last year. I think they ended up not doing it. Um, I don't know if they're going to start it back again. All right, we'll give questions another minute. Um, but again, you know, we just want to thank you all for being here tonight. Um, we know it's a scary process and we don't want it to be a scary process. Um, you know, we do want to try to get as many people in as we can. Um, oh, I have one more question that just came in. Um, if you're on only the wait list this year, would you be considered a returning family for next year's registration? Amy or Debbie, do we... Do we have an answer for that? Oh, I think you're muted. Unfortunately, we, we don't do that. If you're on the wait list, you're on the wait list. Okay, so you need to be enrolled in enrolled. at least one, at least one, one day, day. One option, one day of before be, care or one day of after care. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, again, our email addresses are up on the screen. So if we did not answer your question or you need to, um, Get some clarification please feel free to reach out to any of us we appreciate you taking your time to be with us this evening i hope it was helpful and uh, we're looking forward to seeing you next year